Sengi's first principle or discipline is a mental model. So what is that? Well, in our acronym, most favorable player team sports. This is the first one. Okay, mental models from M for most. How does that work? Well, it says this. Mental models are the deeply held assumptions by individual, uh, individuals and organizations about who we are, what we do, how we do it. All right, so kind of very traditional businesses have a problem with this. We are this business and will always be this business. Well, we're going to challenge that in Sengi's model. If we're going to adapt and change, we need to challenge those assumptions and we need to create a culture of openness where employees are encouraged to offer ideas to challenge these assumptions. And you're not laughed at if you come up with something radically different. We've got to create something new and better than before. And everybody in the business must feel like they have the trust and power to create something new and better. Okay, so everyone gets a, a formal outlet to come up with changes all the time. Okay, and we don't laugh at anything, even if it's radically different than something, something that went before. So here's some examples of some businesses that have problems with their mental models. Kodak was always the mental model was we are a business that makes and processes film. And they stuck to that and we know what happened. Bankruptcy. They didn't shift to the digital camera era. And when they did, they did it sort of a bit piecemeal and too late. They had to challenge that mental model, what, late 90s when digital cameras were a thing? What about another one, Blockbuster Video? The mental model was, we're a business that rents out videos and DVDs. We're not a movie business, where we rent out videos and DVDs. They actually had a chance to buy Netflix in the early 2000s for, I think, $70 million. But they couldn't change their mental model. They couldn't say, we're a streaming business. No, no, that's not what we do. They said, we're a business that rents out videos and DVDs, and now they are bankrupt. So that's some bad examples. Let's look at some good ones. Some ones where businesses said, here's the old mental model, but let's change. Let's change to a new thing. We don't have to be the same thing forever. So we can use Netflix. Uh, most people don't know Netflix actually began in 1997, and until 2006, the internet wasn't great, so you couldn't really stream things or you couldn't do it very well as a consumer. And the business or the, the mental model there was we're a business that rents out DVDs. You would actually get them through the mail, so not at a store. So very different business to what it is today. And the reason Netflix is so successful is they challenged that mental model. And they said, well, we're actually not a DVD business. We're an entertainment business. We provide people with entertainment so we can adapt and change to online streaming. Netflix hasn't rented out a DVD in a very long time because they've changed what they thought the business was about. Another good example we could use is the AFL. There was no AFL from 1897 to 1986. It was the VFL. There were 12 teams. They were all in Melbourne plus Geelong. And they said, we're a footy league and we're based in Victoria. That was the old mental model. And change that from 1987 onwards. It's not called the VFL, Victorian Football League. It's the AFL. We are an Australian business. We operate across Australia. Not only that, we're an entertainment business. People are not going to pay 22 bucks like we're not to come to the footy. Well, they're not just competing against other football leagues because it's an indigenous sport. With, there's no competitors to the AFL, really. Our competitors are not really so much rugby and soccer. They're entertainment. People can go to the movies. People can do other things. People can go and play golf. So we are not a football business. We're an entertainment business. A pretty successful example of challenging a mental model. What else? Apple, from 1976 to 2001, uh, Apple was not, I mean, it was successful early days, but then 1990s, it was a basket case. Steve Jobs goes back in 97, and it's a business that says we make personal computers. Not many people buy personal computers off Apple today. And that's because since then, they said, we're a business that makes devices to make your life better. iPod, iPhone, Apple Watch, Apple TV+, Plus, Apple Health. Doesn't matter what it is, we're not stuck to personal computers. Whatever the device is that makes your life better, that's what we make. Challenging the mental model. Aldi. Aldi's not, I mean, it is a supermarket, but it's not like any other supermarket. It's not a supermarket where the old mental model is, we're, we're just a grocery store. People go there to buy groceries. That is not what Aldi does. Aldi's mental model now is that we're a business that sells everything that products need, uh, every product that customers need, and we do it at a low price. That's how you get Aldi special buys. You go in and get your milk, but you also walk out with an inflatable raft or something like random like that. And lastly, another example we keep using is General Motors. So they, you know, make Holden, Chevrolet, etc. And the old mental model was we're an American car maker that makes big, powerful cars because that's what American consumers want. Uh, that's the old mental model. The new mental model with the new CEO 
and we'll talk about her in another video, is we're a global car maker. We're not, we're not an American brand anymore. We make cars that consumers everyone in the want, uh, everywhere in the world want. Even if those cars are smaller and electric, we don't have to make the big powerful car V8 engine on steroids anymore. New mental model.